So guys, here are my sort of nine or ten different things that I always have in my bag. And it's just been Christmas, so you might have a bit of spending money possibly, or a few things you might like to go and buy. So one of the first things I have in my bag always is an air blower. And this one I've got here, which I can't pronounce, is exactly the same one I've got. They're not expensive, £13.50 from Wex. Obviously, depending on where you are in the world, uh, the prices may be slightly different, but uh, that's the kind of money you're looking at, up to about 15 quid for a good quality one. So yeah, it does the job. I use it for everything from blowing the front of my lenses to blowing uh, the back of the lens and also the sensor area of my camera, obviously being careful not to touch it, around the lens and the body itself and the screens and the EVF and things like that. So it's very, very useful. Another thing as well is go down to your local, um, let's say pharmacist or somewhere like that, or Boots in, this, in the UK, and buy a couple of makeup brushes, obviously that haven't been used, and they are really, really handy because they're very soft, but it means you can get into the lens uh, grips and around your screens and around the buttons and stuff like that. And it's quite a good way of getting rid of any dust and stuff like that. So I utilize them quite a bit as well, and they're only about a quid to a couple of quid each. I generally go for sort of a medium sized one and also one small one that's maybe a little bit stiffer just to get in there. Obviously you can use things like toothbrushes, but they are quite aggressive. So where a makeup brush is obviously very soft because it's designed to be used on skin and things like that. So that's another little one there. The other thing that I always have, not necessarily in the bag, but it can be at home when I need it, is a proper sensor clean. And I do this even with the A7R4, uh, which apparently a lot of people will suffer from dust. I clean my sensors one to two times a year, maybe three times on a bad year. Um, because I blow it out every single time, uh, I swap lenses, uh, don't really seem to get much of an issue. I also make sure you turn the camera off when you're not, uh, when, sorry, when you're about to change your lens, because that obviously turns off all the electrics, which obviously can cause electromagnetic fields, which obviously attract things like dust. So that's uh, one little tip there for you. These, obviously these are just examples, so you can buy things that are slightly cheaper. There's, there's kits where you can buy the whole lot in one, so it's not just the the liquid on the top and the, the swabs on the bottom are for that sort of price. You can buy different kits which are much more reasonable. It's just a, a, a uh, example there. This is what I have bought and it's one of the best things I've ever done is the Peak Design and it's the slide light. So it's quite small and, and light, but it's very strong. The uh, new little clasps that click into it and obviously uh, mount to your camera through the loops, they can hold 90 kilos each. So it's extremely strong and yeah, it's much and much nicer, and it's also if you're going to be a bit, sorry, if you're going to be doing some video or anything like that, and you just want to take your strap off quickly, you can then uh, just unclip it quickly, and obviously you're not going to have a problem with the straps in the way. If you're going to put your camera on a gimbal, for example, <clears throat> excuse me. The other little thing I would do is get some little Velcro pads, stick one on the back of the um, the uh, the mount of, for the uh, uh, the strap, and then actually stick it to the camera as well. The other thing is uh, a polarizer. Depending on what sort of photography you do, you may not need one of these, but it's one of the things I've always had in my bag. Uh, good for removing reflections from cars or windows in shops and buildings and things like that. Also improves the colors of skies. Obviously you can see through water a bit better. Things like that is, is very, very handy. Not a huge amount of money, especially the higher ones, uh, which are probably the better ones to go for. Uh, you can, go, if you go really cheap, you can end up with weird color casts and the, the colors changing through the filter itself, which isn't obviously ideal. Yes, you can probably tweak it a little bit to bring it back, but for the sake of 25 quid, um, I would probably go for a Hoyer one. And that's what I own, it's always been good. I've had it for about five or six years, um, and I did have some previously to that, but obviously depending on what size lenses you're using, you may need one or two. This is one I've actually reviewed. There is a, if you type in pig iron in my search uh, thing for the um, videos, I actually bought one of these. Uh, it's a 10 stop ND filter, so a bit like a welding mask. Uh, stops a lot of light coming through. It's really good for utilizing um, long exposures in the daytime, so things like waterfalls. Obviously your polarizing filter will do a, a little bit of that, but I, I like to have something like a 10 stop or an eight stop or something like that, where you can actually get on a, even a sunny day, sort of up to a one second exposure quite happily. And uh, it works really, really nicely. I just utilized it on the RX10 Mark IV and on a couple of the lenses I own for my A7R4 as well. Works really well. There was a little bit of colour cast change on this because it isn't all that expensive, it's only £15. Um, but a little tweak in uh, RAW and it was absolutely fine. 
So yeah, it's all, all about um, how much you've already want to spend. Remote controls. So a lot of the Sonys do have the infrared remote control still. Some of them don't. The Sony RX10 Mark IV does not, but the A7 series does. Um, I don't think the A7 IV, the new camera, um, has it anymore. But the A7R4, A7R4, A, A7R3, uh, A7R2, and all the other ones as well. I'm not sure about the A1 if it has has a uh, infrared remote. But you can link your mobile phone to it using Imaging Edge. Just make sure you um, basically when you log into the Imaging Edge, you have your location services turned on, because otherwise it doesn't like connecting. Um, one, it's obviously for geotagging, and obviously a lot of people think it's for people tracking people, but you know whatever. Um, so yeah, make sure your location service is turned on for that app because otherwise it won't work properly. The other thing as well is obviously when you're using an ND filter, you're probably going to need a tripod. Um, my heads on my tripods are Arca Swiss, so having some Arca Swiss plate mounts on my, both of my cameras and also a couple of the lenses which have got tripod mounts, these things are brilliant. They're on eBay, they're about six quid each and I've got about five. Um, really, really good. Nice and strong. In fact, I've got one on my bottom of my uh, Rotolite AOS, so it goes straight onto my tripod if I need it, and uh, it just sits on there, slides in and out very, very quickly, and just clamps on. It's a much more secure way uh, to mount onto your tripod other than uh, other things. Obviously, if you've got an L bracket on your camera, it's, that's normally Arca Swiss as well, so similar sort of situation. Um, just another a cheap accessory that, you know, it doesn't cost the earth, but it's actually a very, very useful part of the tool. Um, SD cards, I've always got a few spares. One, because you know, if you're going on a job, you don't know how big the job is going to be and how many pictures you're necessarily going to be taking. But also, professionally, you would normally shoot um, basically onto both cards at the same time. If your camera's got two card slots, obviously utilise them, especially for work. If it's being paid for, you don't want to go home and suddenly realise you've lost all of the shots or some of the shots, where you can have a backup instantly, obviously shooting onto both cards. So, you know, I utilise the Sony, I think it's the E-Series, e which aren't a load of money. And obviously your certain cameras are limited to a certain amount of bit rate or uh, megabits per second speed. So I've gone for one that's around about what the A7R4 can deal with. So uh, it works well for me. Um, the tough ones are too expensive and I, I can't make the most of it on the camera I've got. This is probably the last one. Uh, they're not expensive and you can buy them cheaper. This is just straight off the Sony website. You can get them on eBay, 3D printed ones and stuff. It's your hot shoe cover. Uh, I'm not sure if Nikon supply these or Canon or anybody else who uses these, but obviously the Sony's have got the multi interface hot shoe, which has got all the little connections there. If you get a droplet of water on there, it's not going to kill it, but it can confuse the camera because obviously it's connecting different connections together. Um, I put my microphone on the, onto that hot shoe and it's actually clink straight in, no wires, so it's absolutely brilliant. But if you get water droplets in, in the hot shoe, if it's raining and out shooting in the rain, you can get interesting messages up on the back, like accessory not supported. It's like, well, yeah, obviously the accessory of rain isn't ideal. So, uh, you know, that is a well worth thing. And I've already lost about five or six of them. Uh, I think you can buy probably a pack of two for six pounds on eBay, uh, something like that, or even three maybe. Um, I have bought them in the past and I've still got a few now. So, you know, it's one of those things that's quite handy to have. And if you're not, if you've got a flash gun on or a trigger or anything like that on, your camera at the moment just make sure you put one of these back on just in case you're out and about it also keeps it dust dust free as well um, that's kind of my sort of basic um, loaded bag really of bits and pieces I always take with me because you never know really what you're gonna be shooting obviously I will take a tripod with me if I need to um, also some lighting as well uh, you know little LED lights which are always quite good um, something like this which is not that expensive um, but I have got some bigger versions of these little uh, little tube lights, which are really nice to adding a little bit of soft lighting into things. Obviously flash guns, and then you get into the bigger stuff. Um, but obviously that's lots more money. But I'm just looking at the sort of cheaper, more affordable stuff that you use every day without breaking the bank. So I hope this helps anybody out there. If you got, if you hope you've had a good Christmas, and uh, get shopping. There is plenty of sales on at the moment. I've noticed straight away they're trying to sell stuff. Um, so hop in and have a look and see what you can find. There is plenty of options out there. Um, I've noticed some very good prices as well. Um, don't forget to click the subscribe button, little notification bell as well, and leave some comments below which are your favourite or most important things for you to keep in your bag. Let me know, and uh, it might give me some new ideas as well. Oh, actually, why didn't I think of that? You know, um, Or some other people as well, they may appreciate that as well. So, anyway, we'll see you soon.